64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Hello, and happy day. How does slowing down sound to you today? Would you like to reduce the noise for just a bit? Are you ready to make a choice and decide to listen? My name is Igor S.F. Walker. I'm here to remind people to slow down to reduce the noise, to walk their lives into a natural flow. Welcome back to the Book of the Week series. Every week, as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. Today, we look at Stop Fixing Yourself. Wake Up, All is Well by Anthony DeMello. In this video, we look at why you should stop fixing yourself. You are okay. Just as you are, do not interfere, do not fix anything. It is enough to simply watch, observe. We look at why these things in you that you struggle to fix just need to be understood. If you understood them, they would drop. This is how you will discover the one thing all the saints and mystics are unanimous about, that all is well. Stick around until the end. I will share with you some tools I have and use that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and all of your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, your social awareness, your self-management and relationship management. What do you need to do to change yourself? You don't have to do anything. It is enough for you to simply be watchful and awake. Awareness releases reality to change you by simply being aware. All that is false and neuro neurotic within you will drop and your eyes will open to the divinity surrounding you. You will suddenly see that all is well, that you are already happy right now and always have been that you are already at peace right now and always were, but you just didn't know it. That's where life becomes beautiful and all we have to do is to be aware of our reactions, positive and negative, and let grace do the work of restoring us to the experience we were born to have. I cannot describe the truth, no one can. All I can is give you a description of your falsehoods so that you can drop them. All I can do for you is challenge your beliefs and the belief system that makes you unhappy. All I can do for you is help you to unlearn that what learning is all about, where spirituality is concerned. Unlearning, unlearning, unlearning almost everything you have been taught, a willingness to unlearn and to listen. Are you listening for what will confirm what you already think, or are you listening in order to discover something new? That is important. Contrary to what your culture and religion have taught you, nothing, but absolutely nothing of the world can make you happy. The moment you see that, you will stop moving from one job to another, one friend to another, one place, one spiritual technique, one guru to another. None of these things can give you a single minute of happiness. They can only offer you a temporary thrill, a pleasure that initially grows in intensity and then turns into pain if you lose them and boredom if you keep them. Who is responsible for the programming? Not you. It isn't really you who decided even such basics as your wants, desires, and so-called needs, your values, your tastes, and your attitudes. It was your parents, 
your society, your culture, your religion, and your past experiences that fed the operating instructions into your computer. Now, however old you are, or wherever you go, your computer goes along with you and is active and it's operating at each conscious moment of the day. It is imperiously insisting that its demands be met by life, by people and by you. If the demands are met, the computer allows you to be peaceful and happy. If they're not met, even though it is no fault of yours, the computer generates negative emotions that cause you to suffer. In short, you have been trained to upset yourself. What is an attachment? An attachment is an emotional state of clinging caused by a belief that without some particular thing or a person, you cannot be happy. How is an attachment formed? Well, first, there's contact with something that gives you pleasure, a car, an attractively advertised modern appliance, a word of praise, or a person's company. Then comes the desire to hold on to it and to repeat the gratifying sensation that the thing or the person caused you. Finally, comes the conviction that you will not be happy without the person or the thing, for you have equated the pleasure it brings to you with happiness. If you look carefully, you will see that the one and only thing that causes unhappiness is attachment. It is composed of two elements. One is positive and the other is negative. The positive is the flash of excitement, the thrill that you experience, that you get when you attain what you are attached to. The negative element is the sense of threat and tension that always accompanies the attachment. All you need to do is open your eyes and see that you do not really need the object of your attachment at all, that you were programmed, brainwashed into thinking that you could not be happy or that you could not live without that particular person or a thing. Remember how heartbroken you once were, how you were certain you would never be happy again because you lost someone or something that was precious to you. But then what happened? Time passed and you learned to get on pretty well, didn't you? That should have alerted you to the falseness of your belief, to the trick your programmed mind was playing on you. An attachment is not a fact. It is a belief, a fantasy in your head acquired through programming. What makes you happy or unhappy is not the world or the people around you, but the thinking in your head. False belief. If all of your desires are fulfilled, you will finally be happy. Not true. In fact, it is these very desires and attachments that make you tense, frustrated, nervous, insecure, and fearful. Look at your list of your attachments and desires. And to each of them say these words, deep down in my heart, I know that even after I have gotten you, I will not get happiness. Ponder the truth of these words. The fulfillment of desire can, at the most, bring flashes of pleasure and excitement. Do not mistake them for happiness. So should you blame your programming? No. You're not blaming your programming, your understanding, that the programming is where the pain comes from. And as a result of understanding, you can be freed from it. Recall the feeling you have when someone praises you, when you are approved, accepted, applauded. Now, contrast that with the kind of feeling that arises within you when you look at the sunset or the sunrise or nature in general, or when you read a book or watch a movie that you thoroughly enjoy. 
get the taste of this feeling and contrast it with the first, namely the one that was generated within you when you were praised. The first type of feeling comes from self-glorification and self-promotion. It is a worldly feeling. The second type comes from self-fulfillment, which is a soul feeling. Take a look at the people around you. Is there a single person among them who has not become addicted to those worldly feelings? Is there a single person who's not controlled by them, hungering for them, spending every minute of their waking life consciously or unconsciously seeking them? When you see this, you will understand how people attempt to gain the world and in process lose their soul for they limp, live empty, soulless lives. If what you attempt is not to change yourself, but to observe yourself, to study every one of your reactions to people and things without judgment, condemnation, or desire to reform yourself, your observations will be non-selective, comprehensive, never fixed on rigid conclusions, and always open and fresh from moment to moment, then you will notice a marvelous thing happening within you. You will be flooded with the light of awareness. You will become transparent and transformed. What you are aware of, you control. What you are unaware of controls you. You are always a slave to what you are not aware of. When you are aware of it, you are free from it. It is there, but you're not affected by it. You're not controlled by it. You're not enslaved by it. That is the difference. You only change what you understand and what you are aware of. What you do not understand and you're not aware of, you repress, you do not change. But when you understand it, it changes. The first thing you need to do is to get in touch with negative feelings that you're not even aware of that you have. Get in touch with those feelings first. The second step is to understand that the feeling is in you, not in reality. That's such a self-evident thing. But do you think people know it? The third step is to not identify with the negative feeling. Do not define your essential self in terms of that feeling. Do not say, I am depressed. If you want to say, my experience is depression, or depression is there, that is fine. You're defining yourself in the terms of the feeling. That's your illusion. That is your mistake. Do not define your essential self in terms of that feeling. The feeling does not affect the essential I. The first quality that strikes one when one looks into the eyes of a child is their innocence, their lovely inability to lie or wear a mask or pretend to be anything other than what they are. Only an adult can be one thing and pretend to be another. We think the world would be saved if only we could generate larger quantities of goodwill and tolerance. That is false. What will save the world is not goodwill and tolerance, but clear thinking of what uses tolerance of others if you are convinced that you are right and everyone who disagrees with you is wrong. That isn't tolerance, but condescension. It leads not to union of hearts, but to division because you are one up and the others are one down. True tolerance only arises from a keen awareness of the abysmal ignorance of everyone as far as truth is concerned. For truth is essentially mystery. The mind can sense it, but cannot grasp it, much less formulate it. Life is a mystery, which means your thinking mind cannot make sense of it. Our beliefs can point to it, but cannot put it into words. In spite of this, people talk glowingly about the value of dialogue, which at worst 
is a camouflaged attempt to convince the other person of the rightness of your position and which at best will prevent you from becoming a frog in the well who thinks that his well is the only world there is. What is needed is not learning, but unlearning, not talent, but courage. And there you have it. Stop fixing yourself. Wake up. All is well. Please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Leave a comment and share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So buy it and read. Never stop learning especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and all of your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management and relationship management even further, do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. Links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.